Throughout this quarter of Sunday School Lessons, we have taken a look at the power and the authority of Jesus. Just to reiterate all that we have gone over this quarter, we have seen Jesus have power and authority over what we go through physically, what we go through mentally, what we go through emotionally, what we go through spiritually as well. Jesus, we have seen that he is holy, that he is righteous, that he is divine. And though he has power and authority over all things, though he is the sovereign God, that has not stopped anyone from challenging his power and authority. We saw the religious leaders do that when it came to the day of Sabbath. And here in our Sunday School lesson this week, we're going to see the religious leaders once again challenge Jesus on his power and his authority to forgive and to heal. So our lesson today, they're in the second chapter of Mark's gospel and the first verse, it opens up with Jesus entering into Caponium and it was heard that he was there in a house. And immediately we're told there that many piled into the house to the point that there wasn't even any room for anyone to come in, for anyone to even move around in the house. And all of those who were there, scripture tells us that, that Jesus, that he preached to them. So there was excitement, right? There was excitement there to not only see Jesus, but there was excitement there to hear him, to hear him preach. That's an excitement that I wish was still in the world today, to where we live in a day where the older generation in the church is starting to pass away. They're starting to be called home to glory, right? But what generations are left behind to, to feel the church, not only to just feel the church, but to be excited for the Lord, to, to praise Him and to worship Him. That's something that, it honestly, it troubles me. And it's something that I'm going to be preaching about in a new series of sermons coming up in, in a couple of weeks, to where it is time for us millennials, that's the generation that I belong to, but Gen X as well and, and Gen Z coming up, it is time for us to turn back to God. Many of us, we are consumed with the material things and, and we turn our lives over to the material things. We give our soul, we give our spirit to the material things, but, but what can those things, what do they do for us spiritually? Many of us are in need today of healing. And I'm talking about healing in the soul and those things that can't do anything for our soul. So we need to, to find our way back to God. And, and again, I think that there, this is a day where, where we need to get excited for, for the Lord once again. Now we'll see there in the third verse that, that as Jesus preached, four men, they were carrying a paralytic, they came to Jesus, but there again was no room in, in this house that Jesus was in. So since there was no room in this house, the scripture tells us that the four men that they took the paralytic, they went up to the roof and they uncovered it and, and they made their way through the roof to be able to lure him down in the bed to where Jesus was. So you have to imagine that with all of this commotion that was going on that while Jesus, while he preached, Jesus, he was getting interrupted here and he may have paused for a moment to see this man being lowered down uh, from the ceiling, from the roof down to, to where it was that he was. And so scripture tells us there that in the fifth verse that Jesus, he, he marveled at the faith of the people who were helping this man out. And so he said to the paralytic, he said, son, your sins are forgiven you. As I have said to all of you before, this is what faith should look like. Faith, it should move. Most importantly, uh, faith should help each other out. They are literally helping this man come to, come to Christ. And, and that's something that, that we as, as God's children today, that's something that we have been called on to do, right? We have been given a task. We have been given what we call the Great Commission to where we should be, be bringing others who are in need of healing. And I'm not just talking about physical healing, but I'm talking about mental, emotional, and spiritual healing. We should be going out, sharing the good news, sharing the gospel, sharing the healing of Christ, the healing of, Lord, of the Lord with all of those that are around us so that they can have an opportunity to come to the Lord so that they can be healed as well. So we see four here who were fulfilling the role that, that we as God's children, we as sincere believers, they were fulfilling that role that we should be fulfilling today by leading others to Christ. And so 
we'll see there their persistence of faith. And, and Jesus, he, he marveled at it. And he's had a few moments in scripture where he has marveled at such faith. One that comes to my mind right away is the woman, the Gentile woman who had a daughter who was demon possessed. She sought Jesus out. This, this story is just shared with us over in the 15th chapter of Matthew's gospel. So if you will turn with me over to the 15th chapter of Matthew's gospel, where there in the 22nd verse, we'll see this Gentile woman that came to Jesus. And we'll see there that she again had a, a daughter who was severely possessed by a demon. And so she came, the scripture tells us, and that she worshiped Jesus. And she said to him, Lord, help me. To which Jesus responded to her, it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. So who are the little dogs? Who are the children that, that Jesus was, was speaking of in that verse, speaking to the, the, the Gentile woman? Well, the children that he was talking about were, were Israel, was Israel. The dogs, the little dogs that Jesus was talking about was the Gentiles. Now, now some of us, we would look at that statement from Christ and we say, man, that's rather harsh. That's rather rude of, that's a rude thing that Jesus said there. Why did he say that? Well, Jesus in a, in, in a way was testing the Gentile woman to, to, see, to see what she would do. Would she turn away? Would she walk away? Many of us, we would have turned away and we would have walked away from Jesus and we would have said, oh man, that Jesus guy, he's rude. He's not going to help me. Life, I want you to think about this. Life is often rude with us, isn't it? Life is, is often harsh towards us. You know, we can be having some, some good moments and times where, where everything can be going along smoothly for us, but then life will throw curveball after curveball at us. Life storms will come up in, in our life. And, and again, as I shared in a recent lesson, the winds of life, they will push against us. What will we do in those moments when, when life is being harsh towards us? Will we give up? Will we turn around? Will we walk away? Or will we lean on the Lord and will we lean on him even more? Will we be diligent in our faith? Will we be persistent in, in our faith? Faith, it should move. Again, we, we don't want to ever doubt in the Lord because doubt will cause us to sit still. But faith will move. Faith desires for us to be persistent. So, so we must be persistent. And the Gentile woman, the scripture shows us that she was persistent. The scripture shows us that she said to Jesus, Yes, Lord, yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. And this response from her to Jesus, it made Jesus marvel. As the scripture tells us there that Jesus said to her, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. So I share her story along with the paralytic here because again, life will, will be tough on us. It's not going to always be easy for us. You know, we have that old saying, if it's not one thing, it's another thing what will we do in those moments? Again, I would encourage all of you today, I would implore all of you today to be persistent in your faith. Don't give up in your faith. Continue to lean on the Lord. And again, as Paul said, all things will work together for good for all of us who love the Lord, for all of us who are committed to the Lord, for all of us who trust in him, there will be a blessing. You will be blessed. Now, when we get back to the scripture of our lesson there in the second chapter of Mars gospel, and we take a look at the sixth verse, we'll see there that Jesus, he forgave the man. But guess who was there? Guess who was there in that house? Some of Jesus' old friends was there in the house. Scripture tells us that the scribes, that they were there and that they were thinking to themselves, why does this man speak blasphemies like this? Who can forgive sins, they were thinking to themselves. Who can forgive sins but God alone? And so, as I said, mentioning that Sunday school lesson that we had a few weeks ago about Jesus healing on the Sabbath, we'll see here that the scribes, the religious leaders here, that again, what was on their mind was power and authority. You could think that the, what the religious leaders were thinking here was, who gave this man this power? Who gave this man this authority? Who is this guy? This was something that happened very, old in, very early on in Jesus's ministering years. So that's, 
That's the kind of mindset that the religious leaders had. Rather than being in that place, being in that place to, to learn from Christ, we see them there judging Christ. And, and again, we'll see here in scripture today, in our lesson today, that Jesus, he had something to teach them. We're told there in the A verse that Jesus, that he perceived their thoughts and he said to them, why do you reason about these things in your hearts? Which is easier, Jesus said to them there in the ninth verse, to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven you, or to say, arise, take up your bed and walk. Now, what do you think about that? Which, which one is easier? You see, they were already thinking of religious leaders. They were already thinking to themselves, well, this guy, he shouldn't be forgiving anyone anyway. Only God can forgive anybody. So they were considering that, right? And then Jesus was saying, hey, is it, is it more hard uh, for, for me to tell this man to, take, to rise and to take up his bed and walk? Again, if you put yourselves in their shoes, this, this man, the paralytic, was paralyzed, right? And so this man would be in need of a miracle. And so, you know, I, I believe that they would have been stunned a lot on, on giving an answer, giving an answer to Jesus there on the question that he asks. Is it difficult to forgive? Is it difficult to heal? Is it difficult to be healed by the Lord? Is it difficult to be forgiven of your sins by the Lord? What, what would you say? What is your answer? Now we'll see there in the 10th verse that Jesus, he said to them, he said that you may know that the son of man has power on earth to forgive sins. Jesus talking about his power and his authority to forgive what burdens us, forgive us of, of our wrongdoings. He said there in the 11th verse, he looked at the paralytic and he said, I say to you, arise, take up your bed and go to your house. So, it's not difficult. It's not difficult for the Lord to do anything, right? God, he is almighty. He's all powerful. He is omnipotent, right? And so whatever the Lord desires to do, he will do according to his will, according to his grace. And so Jesus, he had already forgiven the man of his sins, right? When, when he saw the people lure him down, moving in their faith, bringing him to, to him. He had forgave the man, right? And so now he had given the command for the man to be healed of what paralyzed him. And so now the onus was on the paralytic. The onus was on him to now move in faith. If he moved in faith, he would be healed. But if he did not move at all, well, he would have remained paralyzed. What did the paralytic do? Scripture tells us there that the paralytic chose to move by faith, right? He immediately rose, he took up his bed, and the scripture tells us that he went out in the presence for all to see. You see, there is, again, nothing impossible for God. God, he is faithful. It's not impossible for God to be faithful. He is always faithful. That is in his nature. His nature is that of faith. His nature is that of love. He loves us and he is faithful to us. It The onus when it comes to faith it's all on us. We have to choose to be healed. We have to choose to be forgiven of our sins. We have to make the choice to again, trust in the Lord. We have to make the choice to believe in him. The most difficult thing again is for us to actually move in that faith. Many of us, we have no problem saying that we believe in the Lord, but when it comes to actually moving in that confession of faith, it is very difficult. I mean, this is something that that speaks to me today. And again, I hope this is something that speaks to you as well, because there are many times where even all of us who may be stronger of faith to where we may have moments of reluctance to where we may have moments of, of hesitation to, to where we worry, to where we are anxious in our soul. And in something that we have seen in recent weeks is that in those moments and times, we should cry out to the Lord to help us in our unbelief so that the Lord can lift us up and so that we can carry forward in faith. We again know that the Lord has all power in his hands. And again, we see today to where he has all power to heal, where he has all power to forgive, which is again, spiritual healing in itself, which all of us are in need of today. There is no one who is perfect. In all of us, we are in need of healing. Again, whether it is physical, mental, or emotional, 
we are all certainly in need of spiritual healing today. And so we must move by our faith in order for us to be healed by the Lord. And, and on that note, speaking about forgiveness as well, all of us, we have actually been given the power and the authority to forgive each other of, of when we transgress against one another, when, when we do wrong by one another. But again, we must move by faith to, to actually forgive someone of their wrongdoing. Someone must, again, come to us and acknowledge that they have done wrong by us so that we can then move through the process of forgiveness. That's something that I'm going to be preaching about here in my sermon this week. So again, if you want more on this thought, certainly look at my sermon for this week to where again, I'm going to talk about where there is power in, in forgiveness. There is healing in forgiveness. That is a power that has been given to us by the Lord. And again, we must move by faith. So again, I hope that that's something that sticks with you here in our Sunday school lesson to, uh, this week. Move by faith. Trust in the Lord. Don't be reluctant to move by your faith again. Trust in his healing power. Trust in his forgiving power. Trust in all of his authority. Thanks for watching this week's Sunday School lesson. As always, I hope that you enjoyed this lesson. I hope that you will take something away from this lesson, that you will apply it to yourself and that you will share it with someone somewhere. And I hope that you'll come back for our Sunday School lesson next week. Make sure that you're following this channel so that you can get the next notification for next week's Sunday School lesson so that you don't miss it, so that you don't miss the Sunday School lesson, the sermons, the Bible studies, or the Food for Thoughts. Make sure that you're following this channel today.